During the winters of the late 1980s and early 1990s, I didn't get to do much fishing. Because I was working for a fishing tackle company called Ryobi Masterline and I had to organise and attend their fishing tackle trade shows. That involved spending weeks and weeks away from home living in hotels. So, no fishing, but plenty of time to read books. One of which was this wonderful World Encyclopedia of Fishes by Dr. Wheeler. Within it, he described giant African perch that lived in Lake Victoria and the River Nile system. He wrote that they were large, powerful and voracious carnivores that made fine sporting fish. They grew to over 200 pounds in weight. So, having been starved of fishing, I fancied a piece of that action and I organised a fishing expedition to beautiful Kenya in East Africa. I flew from London to Mombasa on the coast of Kenya. There, I hired a little Suzuki Jeep and armed with my travel guides and maps, I set off north towards Lake Victoria. I hadn't gone far when I was stopped by the Kenyan police. You were over speeding, sir. I said, what in this little car? You must be joking. You were over speeding, sir. You have broken the laws of Kenya. You must return to Mombasa and go to court in two or three days time. I said, that's going to ruin my trip. He said, would you like us to pardon you? I said, ah, oh, what does that involve? A thousand shillings, sir. So I paid them the bribe and very kindly they let me proceed on my way. So, north I went, past the Bonkers nightclub, and on to the beautiful wildlife parks, where the scenery and wildlife was absolutely amazing. In particular, Savo East National Park was breathtaking. On several occasions, I stopped, cut the jeep's little engine, and just immersed myself in the sounds of the wilderness. I didn't fancy taking a walk, though. There were just too many fierce creatures that would have loved to have put me on their menu of the day. It's about 800 kilometres from Mombasa to Lake Victoria, and so I had a couple of stops on the way. One was at a place called Fisherman's Camp on the beautiful Lake Navasha. There, the lads who ran the camp said, there are some bass in this lake, and the biggest ones are over there, at this place called Hippo Point. There was even a little boat I could hire. So, armed with my lures, I rowed out to Hippo Point. When I got there, a huge head emerged and an angry looking beast started to swim towards me. I rode rather rapidly in the opposite direction. Now I love my fishing, but I don't want to get killed by hippos when I do it. Anyway, I got back to near the camp, I caught a load of little bass, and the lads and I, we ate them for our dinner. It was a great trip and a good adventure. Having recharged my fishing batteries at Navasha, I set off on the long journey northwest towards Lake Victoria. I'd read that it was huge, but when I saw it, I was staggered. It was immense and a far cry from the gravel pits that I'd fished for tench in the Thames Valley in England. I knew that fish location was going to be a really big problem, so I asked around. Several people, including the staff at the Kisumu Fisheries Department, said Rusinga Island is the place for big perch. So the little jeep and I slipped and slithered our way along very muddy roads towards Rusinga. During the journey around the lake, I could see how important fishing was to the local communities. There were nets everywhere. And I was lucky enough to stumble upon a fish market where there were loads of Nile perch up to about 30 or 40 pounds. I thought to myself, God, I'd love to get a few that size. So I was greatly encouraged. It was a pretty gruelling journey. 
So I stopped for a beer at a place called Homer Bay. There, I was told to try and find a lodge at Rasinga Island that operated specialised motorised fishing boats. So, off I set again, and eventually I found the lodge and met its manager called Tony Dodds. Tony and I arranged for me to go fishing the following morning, and I was beyond excited because Tony told me that from Rasinga there was always the chance of a perch over the magical 100 pounds. At dawn, and with my heart thumping, I leapt into my little jeep and set off towards the lodge. Once there, I met my boatman, a guy called John Nongay. He was a local man who knew that area of the lake like the back of his hand. We climbed aboard his sassy canoe and set off towards some distant islands where John was convinced some big perch lurked. It was his job to find them and my job to catch them. I was going to troll lures using two pound test curve carp stalking rods fitted with Ryobi reels. One outfit was held in my hand and the other in a rod tube fitted to the boat. I started to work the lures next to some sunken boulders that lay off the islands. And within minutes, a savage take wrenched the rod round and a fish exploded from the surface and set off out into deeper water. That was already fantastic success. It weighed 30 pounds. However, within the next three hours, I caught nine more, including two more 30s, two 40s, two 50s, and a giant 60. I was absolutely ecstatic, but all too soon, it was time to return to the lodge. However, John said we'd try just one more location. And on that very last troll, the rod was nearly torn out of my hands and I found myself attached to a real giant that sped off out into the lake. We had to follow it in the boat or I would have just run out of line. It took me 20 odd minutes to battle that beast back to the boat. But finally, after John and I heaved it aboard, we had a 100 pounds plus Nile perch gleaming in the sunlight. John and I returned to the same spot the next morning and shared it with some local fishermen. The fishing was spectacular. I spent the entire morning listening to my real screech as I fought 14 more Nile perch. It was incredible. Then, one smash take broke the buck section of one of the rods, but the fish didn't get hooked up. We trolled back through the same place and the rod I was holding got nearly wrenched out of my hands. And then a monster towed us out towards the center of the lake. It was amazing. It took me 20 odd minutes before we even saw that fish. And when John and I peered over the side of the boat, we saw this immense silver shape coming up from the depths. When it reached the surface, we both gasped because it was even more immense than the previous day's Tum Plus perch. It took even more of our strength to heave that one into the boat. What a fish that was, and what a couple of days fishing I'd had. I just couldn't thank John and Tony enough. I was really sad to leave Rosinga. But I couldn't wait to get back to England and see all the photos of the fish. I very nearly didn't make it back to England at all, because on the return journey to Mombasa, I stopped at Lake Nakuru to see its amazing flamingos. While there, I found a large male lion sprawled out in the road, so I stopped to take some photos of him with a film camera very similar to this one. While I was leaning out of the window, its lens shade fell off and rolled away from the jeep. And I thought, oh, I want that. So I looked at the male lion and I looked at the shade. And I reckoned that I could jump out and grab it and he wouldn't be able to get me. So I opened the door and he sat up. So I took another shot. But I jumped out and I grabbed the lens shade. Then, out of the corner of my eye, I noticed a movement. And I looked and it was a lioness. Very close, 
and she looked as if she was about to jump on me. Did I move fast? I leapt back into the jeep and slammed the door. Then I looked around me and realised that I was in the middle of a pride of lions. But I'd been so fixated on the male, I hadn't noticed them. So, having escaped the jaws of one voracious carnivore, I made it back to England to see the photos of those that I'd caught from Lake Victoria. I was very pleased with the results. One shot even made it onto the cover of Course Fisherman magazine, which was nice.